Uh, I'm excited to be at a TED, the opportunity to share some of my ideas about education. Uh, one of the reasons I'm excited to be here is because I believe that everybody in this room has the responsibility to be a stakeholder in education, and I'll try to explain why. So today is about sharing. And the thing about a TED talk is you get 18 minutes to talk. And I thought I'd share that responsibility, the responsibility of time management on you. There are 21 slides in my deck, and I've now got 17 minutes and 30 seconds. So here's how it's going to run. I'm going to put a slide up. If you want me to talk about it, you shout, yes, Mark. And if you don't, you stay silent and I'll move on a slide. That's how it works. Thank you. I like to hear yes, Mark. It makes me feel like I'm having sex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a video. It's going to play quietly. You're going to watch a film of my students arriving on the first day of their year at my school, building their studio, whilst I tell you a bit of my story. Yeah, I, uh, I got three U's and an F in my CSEs. Those are the grades that I've got. The only thing you can do with my grades is spell the word UFU. When my mum opened up the envelope that had my grades, she spelt the word fa. Uh, so I failed through education. Education failed me, I failed education. I got myself a job in a department store selling Royal Dolphin figurines to pensioners. Uh, and one day I was in the staff canteen, there was a copy of the Guardian newspaper. In the Guardian newspaper, there was a competition to win a scholarship at the world's greatest advertising school. Friends, I am not a Guardian reader. I like the sun, the sport, the star, anything with pictures. Anyhow, I enter the competition. My mum sends it in without letting me know, uh, and I win this scholarship. The, the, the man that ran this school, the School of Communication Arts, changed my life, taught me how to think. Sadly, I was his last scholarship student. He had Parkinson's when he opened the school. He retired as I left and he died in 2000. The school disappeared when he left because the industry was supporting this great vision, this great visionary, not this great vision. About six years ago, I was chatting to some friends in the industry, talking about the quality of education, the quality of creativity. And I was dared by a great TED talker by Rory Sutherland to go and reopen the school. So Rory became my founding governor, one of my founding governors. Not enough of you. I'll, I'll go very quickly on this one. Why, does, why should any education exist? To develop talent, to develop potential, to future-proof our planet and to change lives. That's why education exists, nothing else. Uh, my wife runs a university course. We've had a professor in the room. Most uh, uh, academic pursuits are vanity pursuits, most. That's not the reason for education. The reason for education is to develop, to future-proof, to change lives. I'll talk quickly on this one then. Our model is called uh, Heroes and Legends. The industry give us three things. Guernsey can give its people three things. Money, knowledge, people. My school, when I was at the school, there were two scholarships in my year. We both won a scholarship through the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian is read by white middle-class males. People like to hug pandas and sip, sip tofu. Uh, my industry is 86% male, 97% white. If your name is Abdullah, your name's not on the door. I wanted a school that was full of scholarships. I wanted to bring diversity to my industry. Some agencies are legends. They give the school 20,000 pounds a year, and some are heroes, and they give us 5,000 pounds a year. We get money in other ways. We take the money, we throw it into scholarships. One in three of our students are on a scholarship. Knowledge. On the second day of my time at John's school, I was there to be a writer. I got you in English. John realized this too late. He gives me a book to read called uh, Future Shock by Alvin Toffler. It's the first book I'd read in my life. It talks about the speed of change getting faster. It's sort of uh, maybe the birthplace of the singularity idea. Everything is a process. From the smallest bacteria to the largest galaxy, everything is a process. And all processes evolve. And they're all evolving faster and faster and faster. Toffler coins this term exponential speed of change. Most knowledge is written by dusty academics and rewritten every seven to 10 years. If we're going into education today, into university today, we're reading on a curriculum that was written perhaps when Blair was in power. If we're studying advertising, my domain, for example, there's nothing about social media and 3D printing. Our solution is a curriculum that lives as a wiki. 
Anybody in the industry can upload content to Curriculum Wiki, and anybody in the world can download the, the content and consume it themselves. Knowledge changes every day. And so the tool to aggregate that knowledge allows this to happen. People, people learn from people. In my school, I have 37 students this year and a network of 750 teachers, mostly volunteers, mostly from industry, mostly people that have a vested interest in helping people develop their talent in future-proofing the industry and in changing lives. You've got nine minutes, 48 left. Uh, learning through story. I've skipped a bunch of awards. You don't need to know about the awards. Learning through story. Uh, not much. All to say here is that I take Curriculum Wiki, I pause it once a year, and I write a story of the year. Uh, we, tell, we learn best by story, so the students experience their journey through story. And each year, the students give themselves a name based on the story. In the first year, the story was, look, we don't know how good we're going to be. We'll work for free. Uh, and out of that came the name Busk. The second year, we realized how good we were. Our story was, look, we're going to fuck up Adland. We're going to go and steal jobs, steal business. They called themselves Spank. This year, they're called Beginner Revolution Kids because they formed a political party. I told that in China. It didn't go down very well. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK, I'll click back for it quick. Well, just to say that, that we deal, in the same way as a, a story, we deal with, as a play. There are three acts in our play. In the first act, we learn how to think. Uh, we do a lot of cult behavior type, type stuff. I might talk about that in a slide or two's time if you want me to. We learn to fail in the second term. It's so important to learn through failure. That's where the best stuff happens. And in the third term, we make it right. We become better. The film you just saw, they made towards the end of the second term. By the third term, they were motoring. Schooling messes people up in a big way. Mark's kid is two years old, perfect. By the time they get to six or seven years old, they've been institutionalized if you let them. Um, my son is 17, and uh, he's, a, he's a teenager. He behaves like a teenager if you let him. Uh, in my school, if you're late, on the fifth day of the second week, everybody paints a mug to describe their brand. We put it to the kilners, comes back, you've got your mug for your year. If, you're let, if you are messy in school, if you leave your mug out overnight, you come in the next morning, at morning assembly, I smash your mug. I smash brand you. Take responsibility for your environment. Uh, on the right there, you can see somebody twerking. If you are late for assembly, the room decides your punishment. They film it, and it goes on social media. No one's late more than once. No one leaves the studio messy. We change behavior. Just to say that we want to be in flow as much of the time. Um, and we reflect a lot. Every day, my students write a blog. Great for marketing the school. Two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand people applied to come to the school last year, 37 places. As an advertising school, we spend nothing on advertising. It's all through social media. My students write a blog, and it goes out into the, into the internet. Uh, and we use this for reflection, and we use SoundCloud for reflection. It's an important part of the learning cycle. Uh, all of us at any stage in our education, and you are still in education, it's so important to reflect on where we are. But, OK, every Friday at 5.05, we sit in a circle. I get some cheap vodka out. Uh, uh, and the students take it in turns to reflect on what they've learned that week. And we celebrate every reflection with a shot of vodka. It's something I picked up from my Spanish teacher at secondary school. So the students all reflect, shots of vodka. I write all the reflections down on a Monday. I prepare back the reflections that the students have given on the Friday into silos, and we turn those reflections into art. These are some reflections from last year. We need to manage our time better. Uh, the one in the middle, uh, we used to have a pub near us called the Black Dog. The idea here was you've got to take your work to the pub. It's a great place to work if you want to be creative. Uh, and the one on the right kind of speaks for itself. Good things come to those who go out and earn it. OK, five minutes. Uh, this one is about becoming a mentor. We make it really easy for people to sign up as a mentor. It takes less than 30 seconds. If any of you are going to spend time in London, please sign up as a mentor. Um, my goal is to get to, to 1,000 before the end of the year. I think we're going to smash that. We're at 7.50 right now. Um, you sign up. You tick boxes of where your skill sets are. Uh, I'm good at finance, client service, you, whatever it is. When I write the story of the year, I write a 70,000-word document, and I turn that into a spreadsheet. We know hour, hour, hour by hour, day by day, what our delivery looks like. 
and I give a spreadsheet to my team telling them what blend of mentors I want in the studio every day. I want six in the studio every day. And so they can go to the database and they know who to bring in. In the same way on this island, you all have skills. Put your skills into a database um, and share the responsibility for when it's the right time to learn something of somebody, you know where to find them, and you know when to find them, and you know how to deploy that resource. That turns into a Google Calendar. In orange, is, this is what the students see. In orange is what the students are doing that day, that hour, that day. In blue, the students can see which mentors are going to be in the studio. And uh, in, in a slightly darker orange, they can see some of the important stuff that I'm doing that I wish to share with them. Um, so they can research which mentors are coming in. They know what to ask them when they come in. Ultimately, three things get you success in life. Ultimately, whatever you want to do, three things are, are, are measures of your success. One is your character. People buy people. If you're a twat, people don't want to work with you. <laughs> Second is prove that you're capable. In my gig, advertising, you need a great portfolio to get a job. But different industries have different things that you need to show that you're capable. And third is what you know about who you know, your network. Those three things define your trajectory. And there are other stuff too, like self-efficacy skills and whatever. But we want to introduce our, our students to as many great people as possible to take care of that third bit. We'll take care of the first and the second as well. Three minutes, 20 seconds, choose wisely. Hmm, okay. So what's happening here is people from the industry are coming along to look at our students' books uh, and give them jobs, give them offers of placements and jobs. Um, this is the highlight of our year. We don't offer any qualification at our school. We don't really believe in paperwork. We have something called the NPR score, and it works like oh, this. Yes. Legends yeah. always get to choose their talent first. They pay £20,000 a year, so they have first dibs on talent. And then heroes, they're the second level of sponsor. They get second choice, dependent on their NPR score. And then everybody else depends on their NPR score. Not everybody gives us money. We're supported by about 100 agencies. NPR score is calculated like this. Number of staff in your London agency, sorry, number of days mentoring that you give us divided by number of staff in your London agency times by 100 creates a score. In other words, the more you put into the school, the more you get out of it. We create a fair system that promotes an entire ecosystem to all do good. So whether you are Ogilvy with 1,600 staff or Kastner with six staff, you have the same chance of a top draft pick to get the best talent on, on a placement. All right, this is the Moo. Uh, Jack Moolock is the last story I want to tell you. Moo lived in Wales, in a little uh, countryside village in Wales. Um, he came down to London, got placed at the school, hated London, and the students hated Moo. He had a really bad first term. Disaster. Disaster first term. Uh, what you need to know about Moo is that in Wales, he used to collect suits of dead people, cut them up and stitch them back together and make interesting fashion. And halfway through the second term, I wrote a brief for him, a Savile Row brief. Gave it to all the students, but wrote it for him. And he knocked it out of the park. At the end of every term, we have a party. At the end of the second term, I hired a, an art gallery in Shoreditch, put all the students' works up on the wall, got all the mentors to write nice things. A guru of the industry, Graham Fink, saw Moo's work on Savile Row and wrote, this is the best thing I've seen from a student in years. And suddenly Moo became the most popular student at school. The great thing about teaching is to find potential and to develop potential. And now it's your turn. Thank you very much.